Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and today's lesson will be the Rational Zero Theorem, or the RZT. So, thinking back out 5-7, the last video, remember, we did the sign change rule to see how many positive zeros would be, how many negative zeros there would be, and how many imaginary. Well, then we had to guess the numbers. Well, the first thing it says it's usually not practical to test all possible zeros of a polynomial function using synthetic division. It takes way too long. So that's why we have the RZT, the Rational Zero Theorem, um, to help us narrow down the choices just a little bit. So there's the key concept, what it is. Basically says if you find all the factors, the positive and negative of P, which is the constant term, the number without a letter, and divide that by all the factors of Q, the term of the highest degree, so basically the six, and you divide those two, if there's a rational root, then you'll find it there in that list. All right, this will help you find fractions. So let's look at an example. And there's a corollary to it. Basically, if the highest degree term is 1, then it has to be a factor of that last term. So here, they look at p, which is 16. So what? Is 16, well it's 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. So there are five factors of P. All right, now we use a positive and negative. Then we look at Q, the highest degree term, 4. Well, 4 is so 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. There's three of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the first thing, say uh, plus or minus 1, divide by 1, get two numbers, then you do plus or minus 1, divide by 2, plus or minus 1, divide by 4, and so on. You do 2, plus or minus 2, divide by 1, plus or minus 2, divide by 2, plus or minus 2, divide by 4, and plus or minus 4, divide by 1, plus or minus 4, divide by 2, plus or minus 4, divide by 4, plus or minus 8, divide by 1, plus or minus 8, divide by 2, plus or minus 8, divide by 4. And the last is plus or minus 16, divide by 1, plus or minus 16, divide by 2, plus or minus 16, divide by 4. There are a bunch. So, and then you reduce them if you can. So in the end, there is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 things for us to try in synthetic division. All right, now, 14 is a lot better than doing 50 things or 30 things. All right, same thing for the bottom. Um, here's P. Well, 12 is just, can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. And Q, the nice thing is just 1. All right, it's the one there, which is one. So you divide all of them, you get two, four, six, eight, nine, 12 things to try for a synthetic division. Now 12 is still a bunch, but it's better than guessing from negative 20 to positive 20, better than like 40 different things. So here's an example they did. Um, basically he found the equation, then he's trying to find the rational or possible zeros. So he found what divides this, that's our p, and in front of the x cubed is the 1, that's right here. Alright, so here, notice there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 possibilities for rational root. So you start plugging them in, guess and check. They luckily found one of them on the third try. Now, I don't really believe in that, but test your luck. You could use the rule of signs from before to help you figure out if it's positive or negative. Alright, and then you start making the depressed polynomials and keep dividing more and more. So, um, let's see, this last one was here. Find all the zeros. So again, find the possibilities. We're going to do that. Well, that's 1, 2, 4, 6, 12, 18, 36. And then divide that by all the factors of this, which is just 1 and 5. So we get, how many are there? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. 
36, 32, 34, 36. I counted 36 different things we should try for synthetic division. And again, they magically found it on the third try. I probably couldn't find a third try. Probably took me five or six tries to get one of them. All right, you could use the rule signs. Now here, it was three or one positive real. So we're guaranteed one positive real. So that's why they should have tried all the positive numbers. They shouldn't even try the negative one. But anyways, they found one. They got the depressed polynomial here. And then they factored, if you can, which they got. Then they did the zero power property. They got a quadratic and a linear. For the quadratic, they did a quadratic formula. And they got two roots there. And for this one, they got one root, obviously. So there's four roots total. We have negative two fifths, two imaginaries, and that two from before. And the degree is four. So they found all of them. All right, so personally, I feel that's way too much to do. So I'll just do the following. One, graph through the calculator. On that picture, find the roots. It should be pretty obvious. Then you can use synthetic division or substitution with that root you find to find the depressed polynomial. You then use that to find more roots by more synthetic division so, or substitution. So you repeat step three. Or if it's quadratic, you can do quadratic formula. And then last, turn all those roots into factors by changing the sign and then multiply or FOIL everything. All right, here's the practice problem. Find all the possible zeros. Remember, do P divided by Q. Um, you should get that answer. There should be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 possibilities. Now you don't have to plug them in, just find the possibilities. And that's it. Again, this is Mr. Wynn. Thanks for watching. See you in class.